Hello and welcome to Sacred Spaces. Hello there. My name is Jennifer Dixon and I am Merritt Malouf Plum with the Energy Center and Thrive Yoga and Wellness. I guess I should say that too. <laughs> we <laughs> offer every kind of yoga class you can imagine, yoga for everybody, and at the Energy Center we offer integrative energy medicine. We can do video sessions, phone sessions, private sessions, couple sessions, workshops. They're amazing, by the way. So check us out on Facebook at the Energy Center or Thrive Yoga and Wellness. Dot com. Dot com. So today in our, oh my gosh, I forget. So I'm not even going to say which number so this we're This is the fourth. The fourth one. We're in, we are diving into the yamas and the niyamas, kind of like the ethical guidelines for yogis, but you don't have to be a yogi to appreciate these. You can use them. No, they really embody everyone's life and they're, they're, it's a beautiful guide. Yes. And last week we talked about truth. Satya. Truth. Satya, truth. So this week we are moving into non-stealing. Asteya. A-S-T-E-Y-A. Asteya is non-stealing. And this one is, is kind of, I, I love to talk, think about this one on a deeper level. I mean, of course we know that if you go to your friend's house, you're not going to walk away with their, you know, candles or whatever, but there's, it can get deeper than that in the stealing. And, oh, before we go on, I've been refer referencing this book, The Yamas and the Niyamas. And I've also been reading the book. With uh, Deborah Adele by Deborah Adele, and we'll put a link down below if you're interested in it. It's really great because it makes these relatively complex ideas into something usable for day, day to day. Right, I just want to make a, a really quick correction. Mm -hmm. This is the third Yama. Third Yama, oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. I was like, I don't know what number we're on. We've been doing this a while. we had non-violence, mm -hmm. and then Satya last week, and this is the third week. Gotcha, Got, thank you. See, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, we did the first one, if you didn't watch, the first one we did on the Yamas and Niyamas was kind of an overview. Correct. So if you want to reference back to that one, You'll understand why I bought this one. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because then you'll get to know all of the the new the new events and the new podcasts or episodes that we release because we are releasing these weekly. And the podcast, the Thrive Yoga Wellness Podcast, is uh, live technically today, and we'll we'll be trans putting these over into the podcast. But to dive into a stay at non stealing, what did what did that mean to you? The the non stealing aspect. I thought about so many things in terms of non-stealing as far as like how we steal from the earth, how we steal from each other. And it's not just physically taking a possession from someone. It's the stealing of energy. Mm, oh God. It's, you know, the, the, the leeching off of each other that we can do when we're not in such a healthy state. I was thinking about all those, those kinds of things. That that hit me too, the non-stealing part of stealing someone else's joy and peace, and the the what she what Deborah said in the book, it's it's talking about how, you know, you had a friend whose mother died, and rather yes. than just sitting there and listening to the friend talk about their feelings and emotions and what they're going through, the person may turn around, oh yeah, when my mom died, and and you're stealing that person's ability to and heal through that. That struck me hard because I do that. I've lost my mother, and when someone loses their mother, it always takes me back there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to take away from them. I'm more coming in my spirit. I'm more coming from a place of this is something we have in common. This is what my journey was like. Mm -hmm. But it really made me stop and think about even that because. Mm -hmm. Am I really being present with someone if I'm trying to fix something or minimize someone's pain? Because the only way you can get through pain is to experience it. Oh, that, so that struck me very deeply because I, I am guilty of that. I think we all do that sometimes more than others. And especially when it's such a, like the loss of a loved one, your mm -hmm. mother. I've never lost my mother, thank God, but that hurts so deep. Yeah. And so... Like what you were saying, it helps to bond, to bring it together, and then it brings those things back up. It's hard, but then you, and then it's also to, it's hard to watch, especially if it's something like that. But that's usually someone you know and you love, and it's hard to watch them hurt. Right. So using that as a, an example, when someone is sharing loss or pain or grief with you, instead of needing to like 
put your spin on it, can you just really be present? And that not only gives to you, but it gives to them as well. Mm. And, you know, I never really, it's, that's why I love doing things like this and exploring these things because that was like a constant shift in my perspective in which I feel like I expanded. Yeah, oh, and for I'll sure. I'll do things differently from that moment on. And that's the nature of the journey. But we do still from ourselves mainly. Oh, yeah. And, and when we're really like see, you know, leeching someone else's energy, it's usually when we're feeling Ooh, depleted. Yep. And that was something that she mentioned really well in the book. When you are looking externally versus looking internally, when you're looking at what somebody else has and you don't have, then that makes you want to take it versus when you're paying attention to the inside and fostering this nonviolent and truthful relationship on the inside, then the asteia, the non the non-stealing becomes a little easier because you're not you're not looking at what you don't have. You're looking at all of the beautiful things that you do have on the inside. And that's just it. We are beautifully and wonderfully made. We are complete in here. Yes. But if we're looking out there, there's always going to be someone that has straighter hair than you in my case or bluer eyes or something. And but God, God made you the way you were beautiful for a reason. And, and comparison to, is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it robs you of joy. That comparison will rob you of joy. And that's what I believe this asteia, this non-stealing comes down to is don't look outward, look inward. Right. And that's part of this yoga journey, right? And it also goes into like other people's energy when you're in this negative mindset and you're looking at people and you're thinking, oh, I don't like her hair. Oh my gosh, look at that outfit, you know, why doesn't she, you know, but when we're in a more, a place of loving and we're fit, fit full ourselves, mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, look at that beautiful grandmother. Oh, look at the love mm -hmm. between them. And, you know, you're not looking at people from that critical standpoint. You're more in a space of, of loving all for however they're expressing themselves. It I love that because it was that mind shift and it goes from the stealing of your own joy first, that right. critical something is missing out here. We've stole, we've stolen, we stole, that's my Southern coming out right there. We've stolen our peace and we're not looking inside and being complete. We're looking right. outside. But when you shift it and you come from this, instead of lack, beautiful fullness, you can see it's, you've taken away the critical and going into this beautiful loving sight yes yes and we were talking about when we went over these as an overview we were talking about the Native American story of the burden basket oh yes so I wanted to kind of go into that a little bit more it's a uh, it's a uh, really it's a story that's pretty consistent throughout the tribes they all have this burden basket but the, it's the medicine of self-reliance so basically the message is to pull from your own inner strength and become self-reliant and you trust yourself to find your own answers and letting go of your own burdens you can conquer the world and our problems stop being problems or burdens when the solution is found so the burden basket teaches us not to leave our troubles at the door of others if we rely on ourselves and our connection to Great Spirit, we learn to stretch into our own unique potential. If we become confused and seek counsel from a medicine person, then we should always use the advice given, not necessarily do exactly what they say, but take that in and discern it for yourself so that you don't waste the time of others if we don't intend to expect or honor the wisdom that's given us. So we steal from each other in that way, too. And then the other thing about it is that as we walk through our lifetime, we carry whatever burdens we wish to carry. And the teaching is to not carry more than your basket will carry. So let's do a visualization. And let me just oh, sorry. finish my thought. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you take everything out of your burden basket, and it's empty for spirit to come in. Mm. So part of this that I read was from... NativeAmericanTotems.com, Sacred Path Medicine, The Burden Basket. It's a really powerful story 
So I would encourage everyone to read it. Maybe we can link that down below. Okay, yeah. Because there's a lot more to it. And it's about, even as the women are going through their day and like gathering things for the evening meal and they're, they don't put more in their basket than they can carry. Mm. And energetically that carries over to taking burdens from another. Because when we try to fix things for people, we rob them of their lesson of self-reliance. Correct. So, so go that, ahead with your visualization. So that basket's a great idea, and, and it, it ties into truthfulness. Because in your example, the, the women were hunting, and not hunting, they were gathering for the meal. Um, that's not the case right now, but we carry these things now. We, we all have these family of origin issues. We all have these, these groups and perspectives, and we carry that in the basket. And... When we take on too much, that's not being truthful. That's the lack of sat satya. Right. And then that becomes like you're stealing from yourself right. and stealing from others. You're taking away from, you're trying to take away someone else's burden, which you don't. Mm -hmm. They're still carrying it too. Mm -hmm. And then you're also carrying it. And as we begin to lighten our burden basket and, and you know, take all of the muck out, we find that some of the perspectives that we learned aren't really what fills us. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of the stealing from each other's energy, stealing from the earth, seeing everything as this is mine, you know, nothing is permanent in this embodiment. Like when we leave this vessel, we're still eternal. But all this stuff, mm -hmm. it's not going with us. There, there, was, there was an interesting thing that was in the book talking about how our forefather, so uh, my mother's side came from Europe, my father's side came from Cuba. They all came to the U.S. and they, they worked hard. They, there was toil there so that we could be better. And then the idea of it is to not steal from the next generation. If you yes. sit there and you think about all of what our ancestors have done to create the life that we know and love and the, the freedoms that we enjoy now... And then we look forward into like our children's generation or our grand, like the messes that we're making instead of cleaning, they're huge. And so that's theft of future generations yes. versus, and, and I'm not saying all the ancestors did everything right because we, we are human and we sin and we fall short. But the idea is to look, take a few steps back at that burden basket maybe. And what am I taking on that's too much? that's going to harm future generations. And that one hit home to me a lot. Yes, it hits home to me too. I remember <clears throat> being young and hiking around in wilderness areas all over the place, just wondering, is this going to be here for my children? Mm -hmm. You know, and some of them are and some of them aren't. But that, you know, this overconsumption and this need to own property and build bigger stores and, you know, if, if it's to the point where you can't serve back, like everything you take, you should give back, then we are stealing from our future generations. And we're also stealing from our ancestors by not honoring, you know, the, the sanctity of the planet and ourselves, the temple. And the work that they did. And the work home. that they did. Yeah. Right. It's, that one's a tough one. It's so hard because we, it, it's, this is maybe a terrible example, but I, I have rescued cats, and one of them was a feral cat, and he will eat. They're fat. I have the fattest cats on the planet, but they're both rescues, but they came from a place where they didn't have anything, and so now we live across the street from ladies that love to feed feral cats. My cats have their own free feeder, and then they also are inside outside, so they, they're not so much anymore because they've gotten so fat, but they're inside that dialogue. They, they still remember that starving. So we have the fattest cats on the planet. Like they just kind of saunter. And it's almost like there's this thing inside. Uh, I think probably, I don't know. I haven't lived overseas. So I don't know if it's the case in every place. But I know here in the West, we, we want more. We want, it's like there's this thing. It's like we're all these starving, feral animals that suddenly get adopted by an over, overly benevolent human that just is like, here, eat, eat. And we just keep eating and eating. And yes. there has to be a, a point where, and I think that doing things like this and having these kinds of conversations. Expanding is, our awareness. Exactly. Yes. Then that's when it's like, you know what? I really don't need 50 pairs of shoes. 
I mean, I kind of right. like having that many shoes, but in all honesty, I wear three. Right. right. <laughs> and so, and that's a really simple look at it, but where can we expand that off to? And it's, do we need the McMansions? Do we need, but I'm not going to tell somebody they can't have it if that's what their path is. But Well, and the the people who have the McMansions that are serving and giving mm -hmm. and their abundance is just going to continue exactly. to expand. As they continue to give. And the ones that take from the earth and take from each other and, you know, want all the money for themselves, they may have a more difficult karmic path. I don't judge yeah. either. Beautiful. I just, I just noticed that not only in others, but in myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. The more you give, and the more it's given. Yeah, I'm really good about it with the earth. Like, if I go out... For a hike or I'm out in the earth, I always do a Native American tobacco offering. You just sprinkle tobacco on the ground and oh. it's a gift to the earth. Oh, cool. And like if you take a stone or pick a flower, you sprinkle tobacco to give back to the earth. I like that. But in my relationships and probably in my business, I think I could do a lot more service. Like maybe I take more than I give sometimes. I don't think so. I think you're very giving. I think you're very giving to all of your clients you. and, and to your, your students that come in. So I don't think so. But I think it's beautiful that I appreciate that. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say. But I can recognize areas where I have grown in the non-stealing capacity, but also where I can continue to grow. And that, I think, is the perfect example of this yogic journey. This, yeah. or It doesn't even because have to be a yogic journey, the human journey. Well, but, I mean, the yamas and niyamas are part of yoga, and yoga is to unite, to be whole. And so yoga, like Native teachings, goes to the root mm -hmm. of suffering, and it always takes you back to the self. Mm. The journey begins and ends with the self. Mm -hmm. And when you can move from this place of non-stealing, it's because you you know your worth. Oh. You, you're coming from a place of not, oh, I feel bad to say no, but I'm taking the time I need to be whole myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a tough journey mm -hmm. because we want to do the things people want us to do. Yeah. We want to be involved in all these things, but we have to have, I have to have that time for stillness. And oh, if yeah. I don't, I can't do my work. We all need it. We mm -hmm. all need it. And in a society that kind of thrives on the busyness, that's kind of my, my soapbox. Cause I, I, I fall prey to it all the time. It's really hard to say mm, that, that would steal from my peace. That would steal right. from my family. That would steal from my ability to, let's be honest, recover from the day-to-day -day activities. Right. And so, and I loved her reference to the Jungian study of how we're different in the morning of our oh, life yeah. versus the afternoon and evening of our life because mm -hmm. that's so true. Yeah. I mean, because when you're a child, everything's kind of provided for you. You're set up with the structure and guidelines of how to think, how to believe what to do, where to go, who to talk to, who to not talk to, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon of our lives, we kind of have to take that on and carry forth and build our careers. And what's important is building, you know, a stable environment for ourselves, building a family. And then in the evening of our lives, we our path is completely different. Yeah, it's to give back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that really resonated with me. I have looked at that study before and explored it. Um, it's been years ago, but I like that study a lot. Mm -hmm. And I used to reference it a lot about what's important to you now is not going to be as important in 20 years. That's So be present with that. Be present with it. That's, yeah. that's one of the things that has stuck with me. With um, Back in the day, I wanted to get a tattoo. I was in high school, and I wanted to get a tattoo. And, and my father is, you know, the king of, like, one-liners, cheesy, lovey dad, quarter, corny things, but something he said has always stuck with me. He was like, what you love now, you're not going to necessarily love in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And he's like, think about it. I think I was 16 at the time. Do you still love the same things you loved when you were six? And mm -hmm. I was like, 
And I'm no offense to anybody that got tattoos. No, like own it, rock them. I think they look awesome. I, yeah, I, I love them. I love them too. But that he hit, he struck me because I was like, hmm. And it's and it's very true. Every time I think about it, I'm like, maybe I do this, and then I'm like, I don't know if I would like that. Into but it that's on a deeper level. We do change. We have these seasons of lives, and you know the things that I, the the I thought I was busy before I had kids. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And now I really know what it is. So yeah. every every season of life is different. And being present with that and not stealing from the future season or or from the past seasons. I mean, that's that's pretty deep. Mm -hmm. mm. So. But, when, but, you know, we're talking about, too, all this ancient wisdom and sharing it in a way that allows others, I hope, to be, to embody some of these practices. Mm -hmm. And... But I could also see, like, I don't know, are we stealing from the past to, that's kind of a, like, I don't think the tr that, I, I don't think we can really know what, when we're taking, I don't think some of us are conscious enough to realize that until hmm. we actually have done it. Yeah, some and of the times it's 2020. I'll have to think about that one. I need to ponder that thought, to steal from your own past. So... How we, in, in my head, and I think that it was brought up in this book, it was brought up in part of this. It is much easier to, you know, it's really stinking hard to do the right thing at all the time, right? Like, like in the moment, if I'm hot-headed, like, I'll just be honest, and it's really stinking hard for me to keep my mouth shut sometimes. I'm stealing that person's joy and in essence, my past when I don't keep my mouth shut and I have to go back and apologize for being a jerk. Right, but if we can move more into a space of communicating mm -hmm. how you feel, mm -hmm. instead of saying, you make me so angry, you know, I used to go back to those I messages, I feel angry when you, because you can't also allow others to steal from correct. you. Correct. So you have to find that balance to own how you're feeling and not make it all about them making you angry, Correct. but share from a spirit place how that makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we can't repress anger or That's we're true. stealing from ourselves, but we also don't want to attack or hurt someone else. So there's a balance there. That goes back to that Ahimsa and Satya relationship. It, mm -hmm. It's nonviolence truthfulness and nonviolence and so speaking your truth and not robbing yourself and not just like Bleh! on people and then doing it in a violent way that robs them of their joy that that's one there's always a there has to be a better way of dealing with it yeah and there's another quote I like I wish I thought about looking it up but it was about this and it was about it's something like everybody probably has heard it before words pass through your mouth consider these four truths is it true? Is it something? Is it something? And the last one is, is it kind? Mm. Mm. So yeah. we'll have to reference that one down yes. below. I, I like it. And, and that's, that's kind of part of it. And I was actually just talking with someone today who was mentioning how she, she gets up an hour early to, you know, plan her day, have some quiet time mm -hmm. meditation. Yes. And one of the things that she started, she a list maker, because not everybody's a list maker, but I am, and she is. And one of the things that she said is she started to write, be kind, every single day. And that resonated with me a lot, just because it's so easy when you are, like, a crazy busy mom of young people. And you, we're all busy. We're it doesn't reactive. matter. It's very reactive. Instead because of, we're not moving from our core. Mm -hmm. And so if we start down at the root of this nonviolence, this ahimsa, and speak truth in nonviolence. And embody that. Embody that. Mm -hmm. Then we are less likely to steal from our past, to steal the, fr the joy from our friends. Yeah. And hey, when we slip out of it, that's part of the mm -hmm. lesson too. Mm -hmm. This world is here for our exploration and learning. Yep. Yeah. You know? So here's this. Before you speak, think, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Oh my 
goes back. Everything goes back to the nonviolence. And not, and not, that's beautiful. Yes. This was so wonderful to explore these concepts today. Yes. With you. And Oh, man, my pleasure. I, I feel like this journey is helping me to become a better version of me. And I appreciate you doing this with well, me. Well, I appreciate you. And, and we appreciate you guys. You. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check back in. We will be releasing these episodes every Wednesday. And so let us know, drop us some comments if anything we said resonated well with you. If anything we said was like, oh no, I don't agree. Go ahead, we like a little oh, bit. Oh yes, of please. We would love to have people interact and we might have you in. Yes, who knows? <laughs> you know, we might talk about it and in a series or in a show. In a nonviolent, truthful, non stealing way. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we wish for you great peace for your day. Thank you for being with us.